Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 7 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 4, Lesson 10 on Finding the Whole Using Algebra. This is our last lesson in Unit 4 on percent. And most of the lessons that we've spent on percent have really concentrated on two things. Given the whole and the percent, can we find the part? As well, we've also done things like, given the whole and given the part, can we figure out the percentage that the part represents of the whole? Today we're going to look at a final issue, which is given the percent and the part, can we find the whole? Right? So if I, if I tell you that um, you know, I've got a group of people and 18 of them are wearing hats and that means that 25% of people are wearing hats, can I find the total number of people? All right. And what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be using algebra to do that. We're also going to be using our calculators because some of the algebra is going to involve some kind of messy decimals. And in fact, what I'd like to do is start in our first exercise by just taking a look at the very simple algebra that we're going to need in order to solve the problems today. So let's get into that right away in our first exercise. So a little, little review of basic algebra in exercise number one. Find the solution to each of the following equations. Use your calculator when necessary. All right, so simple enough. If we look at each one of these equations, right, each one of them has exactly the same form, which is that we have a number multiplying a variable equals another number. A number multiplying a variable equals another number, etc. right? Now, the way that we solve these equations really isn't dependent on whether the numbers are whole numbers or a decimal and a whole number, or a decimal and a decimal, it really isn't, right? The plain fact is, in order to undo the multiplying of the variable by the number, we need to divide both sides of the equation by that number. So in letter A, it's pretty easy, right? If I want to solve 5x is equal to 40, as we all know, this one-step equation can simply be solved by dividing both sides of the equation by 5, and then, of course, 40 divided by 5 is 8. For that, we don't need a calculator. But things get a little bit more dicey, let's say, when we get into a problem like this. 0.75 times t equals 6. Well, that's again simple enough, right? All we need to do when we have an equation <laughs> like this, maybe it's harder to rewrite it, is we just need to divide by the number that's multiplying the variable. So I'm going to divide both sides by 0.75 and here's where it's kind of nice in order to have that calculator. So we can just do something like 6 divided by 0.75, enter, and we find that t is equal to 8. All right. So really, in theory, these kind of equations are quite simple. I'd like you to pause the video and figure out what n is in this final equation. Just take a minute to do that. All right, well, again, simple enough to just simply say, because 0.052 is multiplying n, I can divide both sides of this equation by 0.052. That multiplication will then cancel on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, I let my calculator do the rest of the work for me. 7.8 divided by 0.052, and we get n is equal to 150. All right. Now, in virtually every problem today, we are going to be solving an equation that has this form. A number times a variable equals another number. And no matter what they look like, we'll always be able to solve them by simply dividing both sides of the equation by whatever the number is that's multiplying our variable. So let's see how we can use that algebra and our knowledge of the way percentages work in order to find the whole if we know the percentage and the part. Let's get into that in exercise number two. Here we go, exercise number two. Eric goes to the fair with $86 and spends 72% of it while there. Chelsea goes to the fair with an unknown amount of money and spends 56% of it while there. Letter A. Find the amount of money that Eric spends at the fair. Show your product. Okay, so this one you should be able to do simply on your own. Here we are told that Eric goes with a total of $86 and spends 72% of it while at the fair. Letter A just asks us to find 
how much Eric spends. Take a little bit of time to do that. Well, as we know, we can find the amount that Eric spends by taking the decimal version of 72%. That's easy, right? Because that's just 0 0.72. And we can multiply that by how much Eric total brings to the fair. We're going to let our calculator do that work for us. Hopefully, we're going to let the calculator do that work for us. We have 0.72 times times 86 and that's 61.92. All right, we'll kind of let that hang out. Now, here is the entire thrust of the rest of the lesson. Letter B. Let M be the total amount of money Chelsea brings to the fair. If she spends $36.40, set up and solve an equation for the value of m. All right, this is really cool. Now I want you to look at this calculation, right? In this calculation, we knew the total that Eric had brought, we knew the percent that he spent, and here was how much he spent. On the other hand, for Chelsea, right, we know the percent that she spent, okay, and I'm gonna actually create the equation down here to mimic this calculation, okay? We know the percentage that she spent, right? That's 0 0.56. We don't know this. That's actually what we're trying to find this time, but we've given it a name. We've said, ah, it's the variable m, right? But what they did tell us was this amount now, 36.40. And again, I really want to step back and look at this for a moment. This is a calculation we've done again and again and again and again right? I take the, the percent in decimal form, multiply it by the total, and I get the part. Here, I've got the percent in decimal form. I don't have the total, but I know the part. And the great thing now is that this equation, we can easily solve the way we did in exercise number one, right? And all we have to do, let me rewrite the equation over here, right? 0.56m is equal to $36.40. Now we just have to divide both sides by 0 0.56. Those two will cancel. And we'll let our calculator do the rest of the work. Bring this up here. Clear out. $36.40 divided by 0.56 equals 65. So she bought, brought, she brought $65. One of the great things is we could actually test that, right? We could say, oh, well, if that's the total amount she brought, we could then multiply by 0.56 to see if we get $36.40, which we would, all right? Now, again, the key is pretty much every problem that we do from now on, we're going to know the percentage, we're going to know the part, and we're going to want to find the total. As long as we can set up an equation like this, it's simply going to be a little division to solve it to tell us what the total is. Let's see how all of this gets wrapped up in one relationship, right? The percent, the part, and the whole relationship. If P represents the part, W represents the whole, and R represents the decimal form of the percentage, oftentimes called the rate. I know that seems weird, but very often, like, when we take a percentage, like, 56% and we turn it into 0.56, often that's then called the rate. So it's R for rate. Then we always have this equation. That rate, the decimal form of the percent, times the whole is equal to the part. And as I said today, we're going to know this, we're going to know this, we just need this equation to be able to solve for W. So let's see how that plans out in exercise number three. Scott earned an 85% on his recent math quiz by scoring 34 points. Set up and solve an equation for the total number of points on the quiz, t. All right, so again, we know r. It's 0.85. We know the part that he scored. That was 34 points. What we don't know is the total. That's it. So I can literally say in this problem that r is 0.85 that the part is 34, and I need to figure out the total. 
And what I know is that when I mu multiply the total by 0.85, I would have to get the total number of points that Scott earned. To solve this equation now, I simply am going to divide both sides by 0.85. If I can actually pull that one off. And now we use our calculator and we get 34 divided by 0.85. Enter. And it looks like there were a total of 40 points on that quiz. And again, think about all the nice ways you could check this. For instance, right, you know, we talked about this a, a few lessons ago, how you calculate the grade you get on a test or a quiz, right? So Scott could come back in, or you could come back in, and you could say, well, let me just make sure that if I take 34, the points that I scored, divided by 40, right, the total number of points, ah, that's 0 0.85. That's an, that's an 85%. Ah, good. I know I've done this problem right. Let's keep working with this exact scenario. We know the percentage, we know the part, and we just want the total. Here we go. Let's take a look at exercise number four. Students at a school are taking a state-mandated test. Of the students taking the test, 7.2% of them are left-handed. There were 45 left-handed students taking the test. Let T be the total number of test takers. Set up and solve an equation for T. All right. So again, right, we know the percentage. We know the part, right? This isn't the total, right? So 7.2% of the total gives me those 45 left-handed students. I'd like you to pause the video now and see if you can set up an equation to solve and then solve it for the total number of students who are taking this test. Take a little bit of time now. All right, well, let's just be clear, right? The rate, if you will, is going to be that 7.2 divided by 100, or 0 0.072. And again, if I took that 0 0.072, that doesn't look too much like a zero, and I multiplied it by the total number of students, that would give me the number of left-handed students. So there's our equation. <laughs> Not a very pretty one, but 0 0.072 times the total number of students would be equal to the number of left-handed students. Now, to figure out the total number of students, all I need to do is divide both sides by 0 0.072. Right? Those two will cancel. And now I can figure out that total number of students by bringing my calculator up, letting it do its magic, and finding that there must have been 625 total students. All right. By the way, if the problems today seem a little repetitive, that makes sense. We are laser focused on doing one thing today, which is figuring out the total given that we know the part and we know the percentage and getting a little practice with our algebra along the way. So let's keep going. Take an another look at one of these problems. Exercise number five. Jenna sells apartments for a living. She receives a 4.75% commission on each apartment she sells. On a recent apartment, she made a commission of $10,640. How much did the apartment sell for? All right, so this problem has given you even less in terms of kind of guidance along the way. You know, at least the last time we gave you a variable, right? In this problem, we want to use some algebra, but we're going to want to create a variable. And sometimes we just have to do that. We often do it with what's known as a let statement. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let A be equal to the amount, the amount, the amount the apartment sold for. So oftentimes I let my variable be the thing I'm trying to find, apartment. So since they tell me to find the amount the apartment sold for, that's what I'm going to let my variable e be equal to. Let A equal the amount the apartment sold for. Simple enough, right? Now I want to so set up and solve an equation for A. See if you can do that based on the fact that she's earning a 4.75 commission on this amount 
and that commission is equal to $10,640. By the way, your answer will be a rather large number, but that kind of makes sense because apartments, apartments generally aren't cheap. All right, pause the video now and see what you get. All right, well, it's pretty simple, right? We're gonna take this percentage and don't forget, right, that 4.75% 4 is going to be equal to 0 0.0475, right? Kind of lengthy decimal there. But then our equation is gonna be 0 0.0475 times A is equal to 10,000 640. And again, let's just step back before we solve this, right? We talked about commissions in the last lesson. A commission is simply a, a fee that you pay to somebody uh, to sell something for you. So Jenna is the one who's selling the apartment, all right? And the way that we figure out how much she makes is by taking the percent, multiplying it by the amount that the apartment or the house or whatever sold for, and then that gives us her commission. In this case, we know the commission, we know the percent, we just don't know the amount that it was sold for. So now we can solve for that by dividing both sides by 0 0.075. All right, again, simple enough. Let me put down my final value of A here. Bring my calculator out for its cameo appearance. 10,000. 640 divided by 0 0.0475 and it looks like the apartment sold for $224,000. That seems a lot for an apartment, then you may want to consider visiting New York City or San Francisco. <laughs> This would be rather cheap. Anyhow, um, so that's it, right? Let's take a look maybe at one more problem, the trickiest of them all. Okay, exercise number six. Kenneth just earned a raise of $2.76 per hour. His raise was 11.5%. How much is Kenneth getting paid per hour after the raise? Show how you found your answer. All right, this is actually a rather tricky problem, and I'd like to I'd like you to pause the video now and see if you can figure out what the correct answer is. Take some time now. All right, well here's why it's tricky. You really have to understand how raises are calculated, right? And the way a raise is calculated is by taking your current salary, multiplying it by whatever the, you know, the, the percent, right? And that gives you the raise. You then take the raise, add it to your current salary to get your new salary, right? And what I'm looking for is my new salary, all right? But my new salary is not what the raise is based on. It's, it's based on my old salary. So here's, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, because it's my favorite variable, I'm going to let x be equal to the original I can't get this thing to write. Um, the original, and now I can't spell. Let's try this one more time. I got this. All right. Let x be equal to the original wage. All right. So if I had the original raise to calculate, or the original wage, to calculate the raise, I would take that percent as a decimal, and I would multiply it by the original wage, and that would give me the raise. All right, so let's talk about this now that I finally got the ability to write on the board. Technology, gotta love it. So let x equal the original raise, whatever, the original wage, whatever it is, $8 an hour, $12 an hour, $15 an hour, I don't know what it is, right? That's the point, right? So x is the original wage. If I take that and I multiply it by that 11.5% in decimal form, then that gives me the amount of the raise, $2.76. The beauty of this is it allows me to figure out what the original wage was, how much Kenneth was making per hour, right? And it allows me to do it by then dividing both sides by that rate, by the 0.115. And that's gonna be equal to Let's find out. 
hopefully, 2.76 times, nope, try that again, Dele divided by 0.115. All right, and it looks like Kenneth was originally making $24 per hour. And again, that's easy enough to check. You can take the $24 per hour, you can multiply by 0.115, and you'll get $2.76, right? That was Kenneth's original wage per hour. But it asks, how much is Kenneth getting paid per hour after the raise? So of course, now I'm gonna take that $24, and I'm gonna add the $2.76 to get my final answer. $26.76. And, and that can be very, very tricky, right? We have to be very, very firm in terms of how raises are calculated. And they're calculated by taking some original pay, wage, salary, whatever, multiplying it by the decimal version of the percent to get the raise. But then, of course, you have to take the raise and add it to whatever you started at to figure out what your new wage is. All right, let's wrap this up. So today, what we saw, again, wasn't anything particularly new in terms of percent, but we really looked at a different issue today. How do you find the total, or the whole, or whatever you began with? How do you do that if you know the part and you know the percentage? And at least what we did today is we saw how we could set up very simple algebraic equations, one-step equations, that then we could use division in order to solve to find the whole, all right? And no great surprise, right, the whole is the part divided by the percent, as opposed to the part being the whole times the percent, at least in decimal form. All right, well, I want to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 7 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.